Hey everybody, what's up? Just Aaron here, Question Period Canada. How you doing? It's mild here in Nova Scotia, so that's great. This guy, Jagmeet Singh, so is he for Canadians or against Canadians? Is he a liberal? Is he an NDP? It's really confusing with this coalition government. Wouldn't you agree? It's very strange. Just the idea that the NDP party and the liberals have been in cahoots for all these years. What's really interesting is that Jagmeet doesn't sound like he's very satisfied with the liberals. He gives a very in-depth speech here and he trashes the liberals and the conservatives and is aware that times are so tough for regular Canadians and our households. It's a mess. It's so confusing about Jagmeet. Let's check him out. Before we get going, I want to ask a question. This is Question Period Canada. Do you think Jagmeet is only after his pension? Sometimes I think that. Thanks so much. So we spent yesterday night, we were knocking on doors in Edmonton with our local candidate for Edmonton Center, Tricia Esterbrooks, and we heard from the people and their stories were very clear. People were worried about the cost of everything being more expensive. They're saying that the rent's up, the mortgage is up, everything's more expensive, groceries are more expensive. And they were feeling that, that worry that what's gonna happen next, that uncertainty for the future. They weren't hopeful for a new year, they were worried. And they're worried for their kids. They're worried about putting food on the table. And they felt a lot of worry and fear. And at a time when people are feeling this here in Edmonton, we know this is what people are feeling across the country. At the same time, Justin Trudeau is having a meeting with his cabinet in Montreal, and he's talking about growing the middle class. Well, he's had almost nine years in power, and instead of growing the middle class, things have gotten worse and worse. It's more expensive to buy groceries, more expensive to rent or to mortgage. Life has gotten harder. Salaries haven't kept up. He is out of touch. And that's why our strategic session is going to focus on how we can continue to make this parliament work for people. How do we deliver for people like we deliver dental care? How do we deliver housing that's affordable? How do we bring down people's rents? How do we focus on making sure people can... All right, I don't mean to interrupt, but Jagmeet, if you think the liberals are out of touch, which they are, you should give me a call because I've got somebody else. It's you that is out of touch. You think that you're doing the right thing by Canadians. Canadians want these liberals gone. You'd be the hero if you made that happen, but you don't do it. You're out of touch. Just saying, continue. They don't know what people are going through and they've had so many years to make things better and haven't. You Democrats are focused on making life more affordable, how we can fight for you and your families, not for the ultra rich like the liberals and conservatives. How do we fight for everyday families, for young people, for seniors to make their lives better? That's our focus. And that's what we focus on. That's what we'll be focusing on during our time here in Edmonton. All right, Jag, we're listening. Where did it all start? Uh, from the beginning, we've said, we said and we maintain that the reason we were in that crisis was a direct failure of Justin Trudeau's leadership and also other levels of government that failed to act to take the, the challenge presented seriously. Their inaction resulted in a serious crisis where we reluctantly supported the invocation of the emergencies uh, measures. We said that that was uh, something that we reluctantly supported back it up is that what you're saying we made a mistake like the liberals won't admit it it sounds like he's admitting a mistake uh and then uh we also were very open to the rulo commission and the work and the accountability measures to assess whether it was the right decision and what need to be done differently in the future the ruling has been passed down i understand there will be an appeal of that ruling and we will follow closely to see the outcome of that appeal back on the fence i see like come on you can't do that. Are you just in it for your pension, thinking about the future? Our focus in terms of what we want to do moving forward is really how do we make Parliament work for people? We've seen a lot of frustration, a lot of worry and anxiety, and we want to find ways to make that better. And what we know that people are worried about, cost of groceries, cost of rent, cost of housing, cost of mortgage. That cost of living question is the biggest question on people's mind. How do I just get by? So he obviously knows what the real issues are, but he's always bragging about this dental care thing. Do you know how much money you have to spend before you get your money back? People can't do that, that they're trying to help. Just saying that program doesn't work. 
For those folks, we want to make sure that we're using the power we have to make life better. How do we bring down the cost of rent, bring down the cost of groceries? That's our focus. We've delivered on things like dental care. We want to expand that. We're going to continue to, to deliver on making sure people can get their teeth looked after and lower the cost for families. We also want to make sure that we move forward on the other initiatives that we talked about, making sure people can afford medication with pharmacare. But cost of living is our focus, and we want to use our power to make sure life is more affordable. And that's our focus, making government work for people. When I'm prime minister, I will keep my promises. Now, another promise. Let me try again. We want to use our power to make sure life is more affordable. And that's our focus, making government work for people. Well, we, we think there's a lot of opportunity across the country. Here in Edmonton, we have an in incredible candidate for Edmonton Senator Trisha Esserbrooks, uh, past chair of the school board, someone that is very popular at the doorstep, someone that people see as someone who's fought for them, who stood up for their families and for their kids. And that's, that's what you get with New Democrats. So we want to make sure people know that when we talk about making life better for people, we've delivered. We can get it done. And so when we talk about how we can make things better for people in the future, we want people to know we, we've got a track record now. We've delivered on dental care. We were able to get legislation like the child care legislation. We got that done. And now we can, we can deliver on more. And so we want. Did they really deliver on dental care, though? Because if you know anything about that program, it's going to be really tough for people to afford before they get their money back. It's not free dental. It's not like that. They want to cut health care. They want to cut and it's going to hurt families. It's not going to help people in this time. And we want to put to Canadians that New Democrats are the ones on your side. We're not beholden to the corporations like the corporate controlled conservatives. We're not out of touch like the liberals and Justin Trudeau. We're fighting for families. We're fighting for you. And we have done so. And we're going to continue to do so here in Edmonton and across the country. That other video we took a quick peek at, he tried it again to say that when he was next prime minister, for, uh, sorry, Burnaby South, from the top, please. Absolutely. For, for the folks over here, when I'm Prime Minister, I will keep my promises. Yes. Absolutely. Now, let me try again. Let me try again. There's another promise that this Prime Minister made that would certainly help the crisis in, in our healthcare system. He promised a guaranteed... It's just really funny. Like... To see it the second time, he tries the third. We'll show that later. Well, I've had the honor of having a number of conversations with Rachel Notley. Uh, recently, we chatted uh, since getting here to Edmonton. And Rachel is someone who has shown people what you get with a new Democrat. When she was premier, she showed uh, incredible focus on people. Making sure government worked for people was her focus, and she did that. She fought for people, ran a good government, made life better for people. And as uh, an opposition leader continues to fight for, for people, fighting back against the conservatives' idea of cutting pensions, uh, against her cuts to health care. You heard it straight from Jagmeet here. I'm just kidding, but he's talking about pensions. Us also, at the federal level, as champions for people, we are here for you. We're not controlled by the conser corporations like the conservatives. We're not out of touch like the liberals. We are focused on you and your family and getting you and your family the help that you need. We've done that. We're going to continue to do that. Just going to watch along for the, the rest of the video. What's happened over the past nine years? And we know that the Liberals promised a lot. They said they were going to make things better. And there was a lot of hope and optimism when Justin Trudeau was first elected. And now people are left really disappointed. They feel really let down. They feel like they have not gotten better off. In fact, things have gotten worse off. They, you know, their Canadians are but worse off. But by you now sometimes. And so we want to put to Canadians that, that you can't trust the Liberals to continue uh, down the same path where they've let you down. You can't, you can't support them. They're not going to make life better. They're not going to address the challenges that people are going through. High cost of rent. Do something about mortgage, that. High cost of groceries. High cost of living. And then with the conservatives, I know who Pierre Polyev is. I, I've known him and seen him very up close. He is someone who believes in cutting the things that people need. He wants to cut. He voted to cut school lunch programs. He voted to cut dental care. Even though he himself has had taxpayer-funded dental care for most of his adult life. He voted against your grandparents, your parents, against seniors getting dental care. Look into That's that plan, guys. And I want Canadians to know that. It doesn't I want work. I Canadians to know who we are. Where did we spend our time? We spent our time fighting for you, 
fighting to bring in dental care, fighting to make sure people got a GST rebate that was double what it was before, fighting to make sure people's lives are better. That's what we do. We believe we're better off when we take care of each other. The conservatives want to leave you on your own. And that is not how we deal with challenges. In Canada, when our neighbors are hurting, we look out for one another. The conservatives it's want not to enough, Jagmeet. Like it sounds like talk. Your pensions, your health care, and the Liberals and Justin Trudeau are out of touch. We want to show Canadians that there is an option. There is an alternative. We'll be there for you like we have in the past. We'll continue to fight for you. You can trust us. I don't know. It doesn't well, seem we, like we there really position, is a third like option. The and the Conservatives. We, we really take a, an approach of, of humanity. We, we see the suffering going on. I'm watching right in here. Israel and Palestine. We see people in pain. We see people dying. And we want to do everything we can to stop that from happening. That's Get rid we of the Liberals. First out to call for uh, the hostages to be released and a ceasefire. We want to see peace and we want to see an end to the violence. And that's what's motivating us. That's been our focus. We've been really focused on, on, that, on that human side, the human cost and the human toll of violence. And uh, for the other parties, they've not had that same focus. Uh, they were reluctant to, to support the idea of supporting a ceasefire. Uh, the Conservatives remain um, unclear on where they stand and, and the Liberals it's have pretty come clear. I think that's a, a positive thing when Canada supported the vote. Uh, but really, we just want to see peace. We want to see a path towards a long-standing security and safety for okay, people, I'm of getting out. people of Palestine. And we want to do our part as a nation. We want to encourage Canada to do its part as a nation to give people that, that hope for a better future. I remember when there used to be three legitimate choices for, like, federal elections. What is happening to that Jagmeet? Uh, we want to put to Canadians that they, they have a real choice here. They don't have to stick between the red and blue. They've been, uh, they've seen nine years of Justin Trudeau. And I ask you, like you've been, you've seen nine years of Justin Trudeau. He promised to grow the middle class. That's what he's talking about again now, nine years later. Has he done that? Or have things actually gotten worse? Like, is it more expensive to rent, more expensive to buy a home, more expensive to buy your groceries? Is life better or worse after nine years of liberals? I would say worse, very clearly. And people tell me things are worse. And then I also want to remind folks, when conservatives were in power, remember when Harper was in power? He cut the things that you needed. He cut health care. He cut and it hurt. Is Jagmeet doing a little fear-mongering here? Jagmeet, are you fear-mongering? 30 hours at the end of session voting against everything, cutting dental care, wanting to cut supports for seniors, wanting to cut a school lunch program. That's who he is. I know him. He is going to cut the things that you need and that is not what Canadians uh, need at this time, right? At a time when things are tough, you don't want to see even more cuts of life worse. You want to see support for people. We want to make sure we're doing the prudent thing, the responsible thing, supporting people in this time, making sure we work together to build that better Canada. That's what New Democrats are about. And so I want to put to Canadians, don't is worry that what they're about, about this question of, of vote splitting. You've got liberals who have been in power for nine years, and they've let you down. You the could have stopped that years ago. New Democrats are here for you. We've delivered already. We can show, we've showed that we can get things done. We got dental care done. It doesn't come off as honest, like, is, as honest, People like it seems dishonest. And we can do so much more. And we want, we want Canadians to know we're going to be there for you. We're going to keep on fighting. When we come out of this session, we're going to focus again on making sure you have a home you can afford, that rent is more uh, affordable, and that groceries are more affordable. And we're going to take on the corporate-controlled conservatives and the liberals and take on the corporations that are driving up the cost of your groceries want to call it an direct. election we're the only jag meat you can do it and make sure that people know that we're on their side you can make it and happen I would say the vast majority of issues we are very much in line our values are the same we believe in in making sure people uh, are now he's talking about how he watches the liberals we back make sure that homes are affordable because he does wash the liberal backs like you democrats don't punch down like you see the conservatives punching down on the on the weak and the marginalized and take shots at people that are weaker than them. We go after the powerful. Is we that, go after it's a lot of politics going on. Corporate, uh, I'm going to jump out again. The one that took on it's too much. Busta, that is making more money than he's ever made while Canadians are paying the most they've ever paid for grocery prices. You're never going to see Pierre Polyev take him on. You're never going to see Justin Trudeau take him on. We're the ones that fight the powerful for the people. And, and I want to put that uh, to, to Canadians. That's what New Democrats have done in Alberta. That's what New Democrats have done federally. Uh, we share so much in common, and we're focused on the things that matter to you and your family. 
I appreciate the question. When it comes to housing, one of the ways that we distinguish ourselves from the liberals and conservatives is they, they were only pushing one solution. They talk about private development and, and they think that's going to solve the problem. And we know that one solution alone is not going to solve the problem. We need to look at all the solutions. Every solution has to be on the table. Uh, that's what distinguishes us from the, the liberals and the conservatives. They think just do the same thing that's been happening. For the we almost forgot to include the third try at saying when he was going to be the next prime minister. This might have been the downfall of the NDP party. They lost a lot of respect this day. Now we know that there's some people in this chamber that like the number three. So when I'm prime minister, I will keep my promise. But let me try again. There's another promise the prime minister made that would certainly help in this health care crisis. He promised a guaranteed wage of at least $25 an hour for long-term care workers. Now, this would help free up spaces in the hospital so seniors could go to a long-term care home yeah. and get the proper respect and treatment that they need. Yes. Now, did the Prime Minister mean what he said, or was he hoping that a fight with the provinces would mean that he didn't have to deliver on this promise either? Yeah. Here, here. Full prime. He was kind of going hard at Trudeau there, though. That's good to see. The past couple of years, just do more of it. We know we need to build more homes, but we also need to build more homes that are affordable, that are actually affordable. And to do that, we need to look at all the different ways to make sure people can actually afford a home. We need to look at not-for-profit housing, cooperative housing, purpose-built rental. We need to make sure that we build student housing specifically to help students so that they're not also competing in the same rental market with, with families and young professionals who've graduated. We need all the solutions on the table and looking at uh, creative solutions like rent to own, I think we have to be open to all solutions that make life more affordable, that keep the, the dream of owning a home alive. Uh, and we can do that. Other countries have figured this out, but it's gonna take the courage to take on uh, all the solutions and not just focus on one. We gotta look at the financialization of housing as well. There's a lot of serious challenges. And I put to you, the conservatives and liberals are not up to the task of dealing with this problem because they are not looking at all the solutions. We are prepared to do that. We haven't looked at that particular model that, that you brought up, um, but we have looked in general at, at what some of the solutions are from other countries. One of the things that became very clear when we looked at affordability in other countries in Canada was the amount of purpose-built rental. Uh, in countries where there's affordability in Europe, we noticed that there was at least 20% of the housing market was purpose-built for rental, was, was specifically rental. And in Canada, we're well below 5%. So it makes it so hard for people to find affordable rent when there's really no options available. We know that in a lot of communities uh, around the world where there's affordability, there's a lot of good quality uh, alternatives like cooperative housing or not-for-profit housing or, or, or city-owned, municipal or state-owned housing that is very affordable for people as a real option for young professionals to be able to rent and, and be able to afford. So we need to look at all those solutions that work in other countries and then put those in place in Canada. Every solution has to be on the table. We can't just focus on one approach because that is not working. And we certainly can't do what the conservatives and liberals have done because their approach has brought us to this position. The affordability problem didn't start with the liberals. It actually began before that with the conservatives and before that with the liberals who stopped investing in affordable housing. So this is a decades long problem, but the solutions are there. We just have to have the courage and the will to take on all these solutions. At the end here, we'll see the reasons that I just can't trust Jagmeet anymore. I used to cheer for Singh, for sure, but not as a, like a leader, but just as a politician. Now, it's different. Like, I, I don't trust him. Like, it's been too long in bed with these liberals. Well, I would start off by saying we need oil and gas, and we need oil and gas in Canada. There's no question about it, and we need those workers. We're not going to be able to build a Canada... Uh, that we want without those resource sector workers. They're, they're essential, they're fundamental, they're vital to our economy, and they're vital to our country. And those workers also deserve a plan. If there are going to be changes in the economy because of, of global market changes, if there's going to be a shift in where resources are needed, if there's going to be more focus on renewable energy, if, if car manufacturers are moving away from combustion engines and more electrical cars are coming forward, then those workers deserve a government that's going to fight for them to make sure they've got jobs, not just for the next couple of years, but for the, for the foreseeable future. And that's the role of government, to make sure that resource sector workers, oil and gas workers, all workers know that there's a plan to ensure that they'll continue to be able to earn enough to support themselves, their family, keep food on the table, keep a roof over their head. 
That's why we push for changes to the approach that government takes around how we build for the future. We want workers at the table, so the decisions around where we make investments, how we keep up and compete with countries like the United States, where they've made massive investments that will prioritize certain sectors, we need to keep up so we can create those jobs here in Canada. We believe in jobs. We're a jobs party. We're a workers party. And that's why our focus will always be on making sure there's a bright future for workers. But what I heard at the doorsteps really clearly was a deep concern about affordability. And so that's what we're going to focus on. We want the people of Edmonton to know. We want the people of Alberta to know. We hear you when you say the cost of everything is up. And we know one of the major drivers of the cost of groceries in particular is corporate greed. No one else is going to say that. But you know when you go to a grocery store and you see those prices up, you know that those grocery store owners are seeing record profits. And in Canada, there's really just three grocery stores, CEOs that run the market, Sobeys, Metros, and Loblaws. Those three companies run the majority of grocery stores in our country, and they're making record profits while you're struggling. And they're engaged in countless anti-competitive behavior, basically practices that gouge you and your family, price fixing, price gouging. They engage in these practices and they're not being stopped. We're the only party saying we're gonna take them on. We're gonna take on their corporate greed, we're gonna bring down the prices of your groceries. Not by asking them nicely, not by ignoring them, but taking them on directly. We're the only party with the courage to do that. When it comes to affordability, you cannot trust the liberals. They've had nine years, if things have gotten worse. You can't trust the conservatives. They're gonna cut and make it even worse. New Democrats are gonna take on the real problem and make sure life is more affordable. Thank you so much, merci beaucoup, thank you. So at the end there, uh, Jack Mead just waddles out the door after that long speech, which really was engaging. Like, but is he on the side of Canadians or is it just about his pension? You let me know. Like, I don't know. I'm just asking Canadians what they think, trying to show them what they need to see. I'm Aaron, Question Period Canada. This is a great time we're having here learning about Canadian politics, seeing what is actually going on. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you next video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to have something healthy to eat and try to stay warm. We'll catch you next video.